again and welcome to exercise 34, chamfer. Chamfer connects two curves by extending or trimming them to intersect or to join with a beveled line. Chamfer works on convergent or intersecting curve. Something important to, note, to notice about uh, chamfer is uh, distances. The first chamfer distance specifies the distance from the chamfer end on the first curve to the point where the two curves would intersect. The second chamfer distance specifies the distance of the chamfer end on the second curve to the intersection point. A chamfer distance of zero trims or extends that curve to the extension point. If the chamfer distance is non-zero, a chamfer line is created that far from the intersection and the curve is extended to the chamfer line. If you enter zero for both distances, the curves are trimmed or extended to their intersection, but no chamfer line is created. In other words, you'll get a similar effect as a connect curve command. Okay, so let's begin by opening the file associated with this exercise called uh, chamfer. That's the auxiliary model that we will need for this particular exercise. Chamfer. Open. And that file looks just like this. We're going to begin by going to the curve menu and selecting chamfer curves. From the select first curve to chamfer, type 1, 1 and press enter to set the distances. Now make sure to set join equals yes if it isn't already set to that in your command bar. And now you can select one of the inner vertical lines. Next, select an adjacent horizontal line like so. Continue creating chamfers on all of the corners on the interior rectangle. Now, we're going to repeat the chamfer one more time, only we're going to use slightly different parameters. So press enter, or in my, my personal preference is to right click to bring up the previous command. And this time, for the chamfer uh, coordinates, we're going to type in 3, comma, 2, enter. Now, it's important to understand the order in which to click the lines. Remember the numbers are 3, 2, and they are somewhat in chronological order. So the first line you select is going to be chamfered by 3, the second one by 2. And this will make a little more, a little more sense here in a second. So let's first select this line right here as our first option. Next, select this vertical line as our second option. And now you'll notice what I was trying to explain earlier. This was chamfered to three units. The vertical line, which was the second selection, was chamfered to two units. Now let's go ahead and repeat the process and, and carefully Make sure you follow the same logic all the way around the entire exterior rectangle. Right click to bring up the previous command. This is your first selection. This is your second selection. One more time. Right click. This is your first selection. This is your second selection. And lastly, right click. This is your first selection, and this is the last selection. And this is what your completed correct chamfer exercise should look like. 
Now the very last thing that we're going to do is turn the curves into surfaces. So we're going to practice a little bit further with our lofting command. So again, since we're working in three dimensions, as always, I encourage you to open all of your viewports to make sure that you are drawing three-dimensionally as you actually intend to, like so. Okay. Now I would like for you to change to the surfaces layer by double clicking on the layer in the layers panel. You see that check mark, you know you have successfully changed the layer to the surfaces layer. Next, from the edit menu, select objects and then click curves. Then press Loft, Enter. Now remember, the curves need to be facing in the same direction, so adjust that if necessary. Might take a little bit of back and forth motion, but make sure that your seams are actually facing in the correct direction. Might take a few tries, and I'm actually going to full screen my perspective to have an easier time doing this. Oh, oops. One more time. There we go. And there we go. Not quite. One more time. There we go. There we go, and I'm going to drag this one slightly this way to the right. And now I'm going to switch its direction so that they both match the correct direction. And that way you can see a, a very similar process that you might have in trying to line up the seams for a correct, valid lock. So let's see if, if that worked. Now let's change it to a let's change that to a tight loft. Oh, sorry. There we go. And those are the results that we were looking for. And that basically concludes exercise 34.